I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. The green comet. Not this green comet, but the one... <laughs> Yikes. But the one you've seen in the media so much is still up there, and tonight we're gonna try to photograph it. So join us in today's episode of... I have no idea! <laughs> The Green Comet, officially known as C2022E3ZTF, has a horrible name. Remember Neowise? That was a good name. And the one after that, Leonard? Mm, still better than what we have. Let's call this one Jeff. Is that okay with you? Comet Jeff. Comets like Jeff can be a little tricky to photograph because they're moving across the sky, so we can't do super long exposures to bring out that tail because the comet's gonna blur. But also, in astrophotography, we like to take multiple images of our target and then stack them to remove noise. That's also gonna be a difficult process because the comet is moving across the sky pretty fast, but we're gonna do our best. I'm no comet expert because comets don't come around that often. This one won't be back for another 50,000 years and I don't think I'm going to be alive then. To shoot this comet, I recommend a focal length somewhere around 200 millimeters all the way up to 600 millimeters. I'll be using a Radian 61 telescope that has a focal length of 275 millimeters. And for those beginners out there that have the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens, this is your time to shine. For a camera, I'm just gonna use a Canon T5i, no need for an Astro modified camera. The comet's green and Astro modified cameras are really good at picking up red. And standard stock cameras are really good at picking up green. You can either control your camera with a remote like an intervalometer or you can control it with a computer. That's really up to you and what you have lying around. Also, this weekend, the comet's gonna be very close to Mars in the sky. You might be able to catch that conjunction. You might wanna try a wider focal length depending on uh, what day you shoot it, but maybe you can catch Mars and the comet in the same shot. Editing Walt here, due to life, this video probably will not come out on the weekend of the conjunction, probably the Monday after, but please, please go outside and shoot the comet anyway while you still can because you're not going to be able to for another 50,000 years. Because we're going to be doing long exposures at a focal length of probably at least 200 millimeters or more, we're going to need some kind of tracking device like a star tracker. This is the iOptron SkyGuider Pro star tracker. You can use any star tracker you want though, or a go-to mount that will track the stars as well. Tonight I'll be using the EQ6R Pro, but something like this would work just fine as well. In order to know where the comet is, it's best that you uh, have the latest version of Stellarium on your computer or your phone, and you can type in Jeff <clears throat> C2022E3ZTF, and it will show you right where the comet is in the skies, and I can tell you right now, uh, as of this weekend, it's going to be almost directly overhead just as soon as the sun goes down. Okay, that's enough talking about this comet. Let's go outside, set up, and start shooting this thing. All right, we're all set up and I've got everything facing north because when you use a star tracker or a go-to mount like this, you have to polar align your mount with the North Celestial Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and the South Celestial Pole if you were in the Southern Hemisphere. What's with all the cars all of a sudden? It's supposed to be out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Anyway, as soon as I'm polar aligned, I'm going to have to start shooting as fast as possible because the moon is going to come out right back that way at about 9, 930. So I don't have a ton of time. And this is my only clear night for a long time, it looks like. So I got to get the best out of this. To polar align a star tracker or a go-to mount like this, you're going to need to get an app like Polar Finder, and it will show you where the North Star Polaris is supposed to be a little circular target. Now, in a lot of star trackers and go-to mounts, you have a polar scope that you can look through and you will see that target and you use the app to see where the North Star is supposed to be within that circle. And you'll make minor adjustments on your mount, move it left, right, up and down, so that the North Star will be right in the proper place in the target. 
Now that we're polar aligned, it's time to go ahead and focus the telescope or lens that we're using. And I'm gonna use the brightest star I can see in the sky right now, which is the star Sirius. I'm just gonna aim my telescope right up to that, take some test shots and try to turn my focuser until it's as small of a pinpoint as possible. And then I'm gonna use something called a Batten-Off mask to really fine tune it. Batten-Off masks are under $20, they're very cheap, and they do wonders for focusing. Oh, and one more thing, I've got my camera and my mount plugged into a device called an ASI Air that's gonna control both of these, and I'll use my tablet to do all that, and I'll try to share my screen with you as much as possible so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, I have the star Sirius framed up. I'm gonna slip the Batten-Off mask over my telescope lens and take another test shot. Okay, there we have it, let's zoom in. And it's supposed to look like an X with a straight line through it, but as you can see, the straight line is not through the center. It's uh, a little lower. So I need to adjust my focuser and try to get that line going right through the middle of the X. All right, we're really in focus now. I'm gonna take the Betanoff mask off. At this point, we're kind of running out of time. So instead of filming myself, I'm going to stay on the tablet. So now if you're using a star tracker or just a camera lens and tripod, it's a good time to get your Stellarium app out and look up where the comet and Mars is if you don't know where it is already. And go ahead and manually point up into that area. Now, if you're using an ASI Air like this, and if you have the latest version of the software, we should be able to find it in here, unfortunately not under the name Jeff. There it is, it's already in my list of things I've recently looked up. I'm just gonna tap this and hit go to. Now my telescope is slewing right to the comet. Even at a three second test shot, we can see the comet right there. I wonder if Mars is on, in here as well. I'm gonna open up our sky atlas over here and see how close it actually is. Oh, we're so close. Oh well, we're just gonna have to roll with what we're working with. I think just in case I'm gonna do a little auto guiding. We're not doing very long exposure, so auto guiding might not be necessary for you. But since I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. All right, let's just experiment and see how long of an exposure we can do. We're gonna start with a 60 second exposure and I just wanna let you know that my ISO is at 800. The telescope's F ratio number is F 4.5. If you're using a camera lens, try to get your aperture F ratio to something as close to that as possible. So here we go, let's take a 60 second test shot. Well, there we go, everybody. That is a one second exposure of the comet. I mean, that's just cool enough right there. But let's just see what it might look like with a two minute exposure. And here's our two minute exposure. It's not a whole lot different than the 60 second exposure, except I think I can see a little more of the tail. It looks like the core of the comet is still intact and kind of round. My stars are all still round. So I think I'm gonna go with two minute exposures. So at this point, I think I wanna take about 90 photographs. I can't go too long because this comet's going to streak across the sky and it's going to make it even harder to stack. But 90 seems like a good number. Going down to auto run, pull up my auto run settings. Just close all this stuff down that I was doing before. Tap the plus icon. I'm doing light frames at 120 seconds. Let's just select 100 and hit OK. If you don't have an ASI Air, you'll be doing this with your intervalometer. Now I'm just going to hit the camera shoot icon and walk away. So I almost made it to 100 images. After about 75, the comet went behind the tree line and I had to stop the session right there. After that, I put the lens cap back on the telescope and I took about 30 more frames with the exact same camera settings. These are called dark frames. I always take them because with my cheap uh, Canon T5i, once I try to stretch the image and make it brighter, I see banding, these little lines in the background. And dark frames help remove that when I stack everything in a program called Deep Sky Stacker. I also took another set of calibration frames called flat frames. Now, these aren't necessary for this project, but basically they are to remove vignetting or any dust that might be on my telescope or sensor. Um, just do a YouTube search on flat frames if you're curious about that. But like I said, they're not really necessary for this particular project because my setup doesn't really have that much vignetting. All right, now that we've taken all our images, we have to stack them and it's very tricky with a comet and I still haven't figured out the best method. So we're just gonna jump in the computer and try to figure this out. Okay, here we are in a free program for Windows called Deep Sky Stacker. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open our light frames by clicking open picture files. Navigate to the folder where my light frames are. These are the actual comet photos. I'm gonna select all these and hit open. Now we're gonna add the dark files, the files that I took with the lens cap on. 
And if you took flats, this is where you add those as well. And if you took flats, you probably should have taken either dark flats or bias. And so we're gonna add the bias in. Remember, flats aren't really necessary for this project because I don't have vignetting problems. But if you just wanna be a completist or a perfectionist, go ahead and add your flats and your bias. Now I'm gonna click check all. And I'm gonna click register checked pictures. I'm gonna make sure that stack after registering is not checked. Normally we would leave that checked and we would go ahead and start our stacking process, but we're gonna uncheck that. We're gonna go down here to recommended settings. And if anything's in red, it's gonna recommend you try something else. And I would just recommend selecting whatever it's recommending for you. Now let's go down to the bottom and I wanna show you something. With these last two options here, normally I would select this option. If the color balance in the resulting images is hard to fix in post-processing, use RGB background calibration. I normally use that because it gets rid of any green cast that my camera might have picked up. But unfortunately with a comet, it gets rid of all the green in the comet and I can't get it back. So I usually use this use per channel background calibration if the resulting images look too gray. Now this is going to give me a green cast that I'm going to have to fix in Photoshop, but at least I still retain the green in the comet. I'm going to click OK. Then we just hit OK here and it's going to register all of our pictures. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to repeat that process. Now, once everything is registered, we're going to click on one of our images here and we're going to come over here to the right to this little comet icon. And we're going to select that. And we're going to find the comet in our image, zoom in and click on it. And it's going to put a little circle around the nucleus of the comet. As you can see, it's already, I've already done it. So there's a circle already around it, but this is kind of tedious, but you literally have to go through all of your images, find the comet and click on it. Sometimes it won't allow you to click right in the middle of the comet. So in that case, you would hold shift and then you can place your comet marker where you need to. Go ahead and do that with every single light frame you have. Once you've put a circle around the comet in all of your light frames, we're gonna go over here to settings, stacking settings, and we're gonna select comet right here. And we have three different stacking options. Standard is just gonna do a regular stack and your comet's gonna be blurry because it's moving. Comet stacking is going to align the comet, but not the stars. And so you're gonna have star trails but the comet is going to be nice and sharp. And on our third option, it's going to try to attempt to align the comet, stack the comet, but then also align the stars and stack them. And supposedly everything is going to be sharp, but I do find that this third method, it has a lot of weird artifacts in the background. It doesn't look as great as it sounds, but I highly recommend doing all three. We'll start with just standard stacking, hit okay, and click stack check pictures, and it will do a regular stack. I'll just go ahead and stack this one so you'll see what the process is like. I'll just hit OK and let things begin. All right, when it's done stacking, we're going to go over here to Save Picture to File. I'm just going to create a folder in here called For YouTube. I'm going to save it in here. This was the first stacking option that just stacked the stars, so I'm just going to call this Stars and hit Save. Now we want to try all three of the stacking methods. So we'll go and click back on register check pictures, but we're not gonna actually register anything again. I'm gonna hit cancel. I just wanna be able to click on settings again, go to back to stacking settings, comet, and we'll try comet stacking this time. Hit okay. And we'll come over here to stack check pictures and do it again. When that finishes, once again, I'll come back and click register check pictures so we can get back to this screen and I'll click settings, stacking settings, comet, and finally we'll do the stars plus comet stacking. This one takes the longest and for me, it almost seems like it freezes halfway through. I was worried that my computer was crashing, but it just takes a long time. I'll hit okay. And once again, hit stack check pictures and we'll save each one in the same folder. We'll call the Comet only stack, Comet, and the third option, we'll call it Comet plus stars or something like that. All right, now let's jump into Photoshop. All right, I've got all three photos here in Photoshop. I've got the stars, Comet, and Comet with stars. The first one we're gonna look at is the Comet with stars because it's probably gonna be the one we work with the least, unfortunately. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer. I can do that by right-clicking and going up here to duplicate layer. 
but you can also hit Control or Command J. Now I'm gonna bring up levels by hitting Control L, Command L on a Mac, but unfortunately, if you have a Mac, you, you wouldn't have been able to use Deep Sky Stacker, so this is kind of more of a Windows tutorial, I guess. All right, we're gonna slide this right here over to the left, right up to the data spike, and hit OK. I'm gonna bring levels back up by hitting Control L and bringing our darks right up to the data spike as well. All right, that's not looking too bad. Let's create a new layer. I'm gonna do this by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E all together. Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. Now let's bring up curves by hitting Control or Command M. You can also go up to Image, Adjustments, and you have levels and curves right here. Just gonna click right here on the data and bring that up a bit. I don't want this line at the top to ever flatten out like that because that is clipping data that we will not be able to get back. So that looks good right about there. I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna bring levels back up, Control L. And just bring the darks right up to the data again. Gives us some contrast. Hit OK. I'm gonna create another layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E all together. Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. And it's really got a bad green color cast. I have a plugin for Photoshop called Hasta La Vista Green that gets rid of these green color casts. But unfortunately, it would also kill the green in the comet. So we've got to figure out a way to keep that from happening. One thing I might try is running Hasta La Vista Green. So I'm going to go to Filter. Come down here to Deep Sky Colors, Hasta La Vista Green and run it, I'm just gonna select medium and hit okay. And I got rid of the green color cast for the most part, but I wanna bring back the green in this area. So I'm gonna come down here and click this layer mask. Now I've got a new layer mask over here. I'm gonna come over here and make sure black is selected right here. Select my brush tool. Keep my opacity down to maybe 40%. I can toggle my brush size using the bracket keys on the keyboard. I'm just kind of click around the nucleus of the comet. And that's going to bring the green back that we just got rid of, but just in this little area. Now I'm going to come over here to my mask. I'm going to hold Alt and click on it. And I'm just, I want to blur this a little bit so it'll look more natural. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And just make this a little blurrier. There we go. Hit OK. All right, now there's so much more we can do to this image to get to the final result, but we have two other images to look at. So let's go to the comet only image. I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting Control J. All right, let's bring up levels, Control L. Slide this over here. And hit OK. And already we can see so much more detail in this comet. I'm going to bring levels back up, control L, and just kind of bring this over to about right there. I don't want to bring it too far because I'll lose the comet tail. And let's hit OK. Let's create a new layer, control Alt, Shift, and E. Let's try to balance our RGB channels up here in the histogram. So I'm going to bring levels back up, control L. First select red, bring that kind of close to the data spike right there. Then green. We look at the top of our histogram and make sure green is aligned with the other two colors. Just like that, there we go. And it looks like blue is already in line. Yep, we don't need to do much with blue. All right, we got a pretty neutral background and we still got a good solid green color in the comet. I'm gonna create a new layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And let's do a curve stretch. I can either hit Control or Command M or go up to here to Image Adjustments Curves. Just stretch it out a bit. And there we go. And you can start to see in the background the trailing stars and there's even some nebulosity back there that's gotten kind of blurry as well. But it's still a very interesting image of a comet. I like this a lot. We can always go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Come down to Detail and do a little noise reduction to maybe 
smooth out some of those star trails in the background. Yeah, there we go. Come to our basic tab and bring down the blacks just a bit. All right, now the last thing we're gonna look at is this stars image. Why do we even need a stars image? Well, I'll show you right now. We're gonna duplicate the background layer again, Control J. Let's bring up levels, Control L. Slide this over, brighten it up a bit. Let's balance our RGB channels. Hit levels again, Control L. Slide the red in a little bit. Watch our histogram. Let's align the red, green, and blue. Bring that green in. There we go. Bring the blue in. There we go. Since I'm not really trying to deal with a comet, I'm going to do a hard Hasta La Vista green. We're going to come down here to deep filter, deep sky colors, Hasta La Vista green. I'm going to select strong. So we actually start to see some of the star color now that we've gotten rid of that green cast. The only thing left over from that comet is just this blurry patch right here. So let's get rid of that. I'm gonna create two new layers, Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and then Control, Alt, Shift, E again. Now in order to do this, to create just a stars only image without this little blur of, of what used to be a comet, you need to either have StarNet version two or Star Exterminator. I'm going to be using Star Exterminator for this video just because it's a plugin within Photoshop. StarNet is free, but you have to go outside of Photoshop. And I'm just trying to make this a quick, simple tutorial. So I'm going to go up here to Filter, RC Astro, Star Exterminator. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to remove the stars. And the only thing that's going to be left over is that little blurry patch where the comet used to be. Okay, it's done. We're left with our starless image and it's just got this little blurry patch that once was a comet. I'm going to double click this layer and I'm going to name it starless. And for now, I'm going to turn this layer off and I'm going to come down to the layer below it. This is, hey, and I'm going to come down to the layer below it. This is why I had you create two new layers earlier. I'm going to double click it and name this one stars only. Now with this bottom layer selected, I'm gonna come up here to Image, Apply Image, and in the drop-down menu called Layer, we're gonna choose Starless. Blending, we're gonna to change to Subtract, and I'm gonna keep my offset at about 20 and hit OK. There we go, we have a stars only image now. I'm gonna move the stars only to the top and we can come back over here to this comet only image we had before. Let's hit levels and try to darken that background just a little more. Control L, bring that in. Try not to get rid of the comet tail. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is hit Control A to select all and then Control C to copy. Go back to our stars only image and paste it in by hitting Control V. Come over here to where it says normal and change that blending mode to screen. And there we go. I'm going to hit levels again, control L and bring that in just a touch more. And now we've created a nice comet image that in my opinion looks much better than what Deep Sky did when it tried to blend the stars and the comet itself. Let's compare one more time. The comet with sharp stars that we created ourselves the comet with sharp stars that Deep Sky Stacker created. Now we can go ahead and crop and make any kind of final adjustments we want. And there you have it. There's still some final touch-ups we could do to make this image look even better, but I think this tutorial's gone long enough. What was your favorite stacking method? Leave, uh, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, leave me a like and please subscribe. I had a lot of fun trying to photograph Comet Jeff over the last month, and I hope to share some more Comet adventures with you in the future. Well. It's time to get going. As always, everybody, stay spacey, clear skies. See you next time.